Can you guys see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, hello. So hello um, again, my name is Gracia. Here's I just want to share about a bit about my nine years experience um, in career. So I have roughly nine years experience in partnership, marketing, sales, research, BD, and now logistic in multiple startup industry. Um, so here's my past um, offices. I switched career from market research to startup industry a few years back, and now I'm here at Shipper. Just want to check anyone here. Uh, maybe you guys ever heard my previous company, so to speak. Anyone? No, no, anyone? Okay, because so to skip, we, we do have offices in Philippines, um, in Manila back then. Um, in my previous company, I was given the opportunity to work and handle Philippine and Singapore market. So actually, I was based in, in Manila exactly two years ago. My office is near, I, don't, I forgot, close to the uh, Glorieta Mall over there. Okay, so in my previous company and here, uh, my focus is to build new initiative from scratch. So really a business development. And I like to connect the dots, creating something from zero to one, basically. I like the excitement to figure things out uh, in the startup industry and meeting new people. And today, nice to meeting you all. Okay, before going um, more about me, I want to introduce you guys about Shipper. So Shipper Vision, um, our vision is actually bringing convenience in people, in people life to do more of what they love. And our mission is actually to power commerce and its supply chain through technology and data. Um, this is the structure about Shipper. We are trying to structure the unstructured world of logistic. So Shipper is Indonesian tech-based logistic company. We are trying to offer end-to-end -end solution, um, specifically customized to your business needs. We're backed by a nationwide warehouse network and, of course, advanced technological um, capabilities. Here's I just want to show you that Shipper is actually just started in 2016. And now here we are, um, we have coverage over 35 more cities in Indonesia with more, um, more than 150 enterprises and actually more than 2,000 employees in Indonesia at this moment. Here below is our investors. And I just want to share proudly that Shipper is now one of three Indonesian technologies companies that is already included in the Y Combinator in 2021. <clears throat> this one I want to share proudly about cheaper media coverage. Maybe most of this is in Bahasa, but basically we want to show that cheaper is always supporting um, small business enterprises. We want to support the logistic and we're proudly Indonesian made. Um, we're always support the young talents uh, Back then, we are creating a shipper hack. Um, it's kind of a hackathon. And then also, um, we're always try to support the small business um, owner by pushing down the supply chain costs and make the supply chain businesses more effective for business. This is just a, a bit about our value. Basically, we always um, come that customer really need to come first. Okay, this is a bit technical here. I just want to share like what is actually the challenge faced by shippers in Indonesia. Uh, we categorize it into the three segments, basically for the small shippers. Um, the challenge here are difficulties to access and differentiate logistic services. Maybe some of you here is also the small entrepreneur or uh, going to be an entrepreneur. This is maybe some difficulties that you're already facing. Um, also some of the small shippers facing like the lack of transparency on prices. 
So in Shipper, we provide the tracking and then also the prices if we are collaborating with multiple JPL partners. So basically, if you want to ship your package, you can see the price and compare the price here. And for the medium sizes shippers, um, there are also challenges on the um, lack of capabilities to manage the Evision warehouse. And of course, the low inventory data, data transparency. Uh, same happened in the large shippers, um, but also adding more problem, which is how we need to help them to connect the nationwide warehousing network. So if your business is getting bigger, this, the more supply chain problem you're facing, we're here to help you guys and also to help like not only with one channel, but omni-channel management from the end-to-end -end logistic um, solution. So we're back in the technology enable solution um, that basically tailored for your business needs. Um, here I show how shipper trying to work um, to connecting the dots between the warehouses, the line hall, last mile, and now we're also doing the cross border. Uh, basically, everything supported by technology uh, and for sure analytics and data. Some of you may be aware about warehouse. This is the some of the cheaper warehouse um, that we are trying to solve. Basically, our client is able to pick and choose uh, what kind of services that they want to pick for their business. Maybe they just need manpower. Maybe they just need a warehouse management system. Or maybe you just need a shipping solution. That's everything that we can cover here. And this is our coverage in Indonesia. Just need to move a bit up there to go to Philippines. Uh, we're now having uh, 222 warehouses um, spread in 35 cities. And maybe we're going to uh, adding more here and there in the um, east of Indonesia. Okay, um, like what I explained before, basically in Shipper, we're covering a full national coverage for all modes of transportation. So if your business is needing a blind fan or um, just a thermal king, motorcycle, CDD, everything, we can help with that. And also we're helping with the cross-border and air supported by Indonesian uh, flight here. And for sure, uh, most of the businesses, they are using the fast on point delivery using cargo by sea. And here's maybe it's more familiar for you guys. Um, we're also helping shipping our last mile delivery. Uh, which we are delivering the package at the convenience of your customer. So if you're a business owner, basically we help to deliver to the end customer. Uh, at this moment, we're able to process more than 110K order per day and even five times more during the 12-12-11-11 campaign. Um, also, this is the very, not very new, but this is the something that we are pursuing. Um, we are also supporting cross-border services supported by the packs, and we're having a lot of uh, partners helping to ship all the package from export, import, and all over Asia. Um, basically, Shipper is also an edge technology enable service management. So this is more of the ecosystem, how Shipper can help your business from the order management system and warehouse management system. And that's all about the Shipper. Okay. Thank you. So aside from Shipper, maybe I want to share a bit about uh, me, myself, um, aside from working, I actually a big uh, believer of a side hustle, doing a side hustle. I have my event organizer um, back then, starting when I just graduated, and I create multiple events in Indonesia. Usually, I make uh, two, three big events per year. Um, <clears throat> I make this right after I graduated. I just put it here uh, when we are having multiple coverage in media um, on the multiple events, just for you to see. And yep, I think that's all. Maybe if you guys want to start with Q&A. 
Hi, Miss Gatia. For a while, I'll just share my screen. Yes. Sure. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, I think since we have a lot of time, let's just ask them if they have questions regarding also uh, how you started or digital logistics solutions. Of course, since uh, most of the participants here are actually businessmen or those who are starting their own businesses, right? So maybe let's start with the first question, Ms. Gratia. Mm -hmm. Hi, Miss Maria. I really enjoyed your talk. So do you have any advice on how to build a good foundation for a business strategy? Because you mentioned a while ago, right, that you started also working, but you're really promoting also side hustles. So uh, maybe the follow up there is, what can you recommend to us, the young people who wants to start also our own side hustles? Okay. Um, maybe what I learned back then, um, I saw Indonesian and Filipinos is actually very similar. A lot of us is uh, cannot stick with one job. A lot of us happy with doing multiple job and having side hustle as well. So I believe a lot of the young people here love to do the side hustle, hustle as well. Um, to start anything, it's um, always start with your passion, but do not uh, stick with it. Because what I learned in my 20s is actually um, mostly failure. So do not afraid if you fail, um, just reroute a bit, detour a bit, start to elaborate what you want to achieve. And we really want to achieve that, creating a multiple option and business plans to achieve your goals um, as a start and start networking actually. So this like I guess commerce is actually a very good start for you to start your business. Yeah, okay. So that's a really good suggestion. We really have to network and start also communicating with other businessmen. So that's what we are doing right now here at Ace Commerce. So actually uh, we have lots of questions for you, Ms. Gatya. So since we have lots of time, the second question is what are some key things to take into account when you're starting your own e-business? So you also mentioned that Shipper actually started very early, just last 2016, right? So what do you think are the key things that Shipper took into account when they started it? Mm, okay. So when uh, Shipper started, um, we see the big opportunity in the logistics industry, for sure. We try to solve a problem with um, those three challenges that I explained to you briefly about. Um, so we, we really come uh, from a, you know a professional and uh, the founder that have a strong experience in logistics and also businesses, but we are also aware on what problem that we want to solve by having by connecting the dots and providing the logistic. Uh, ecosystem with technology we're, we're here um, to solve multiple problems from the small uh, enterprises or medium and even bigger company so i think um, to answer that it's actually if we want to start the e-business or anything we need to start from creating uh, what's actually the opportunity there and what actually the solution that we can provide to the problem Wow, that's so so nice, Ms. Gatia. So are you saying that we can actually start just as long as we have the determination and the drive to do so? Yeah. Right? Okay, that's so nice. So we actually have more for you. So just in relation to your position also as the business development mm -hmm. manager. Hi, Ms. Maria. What are your thoughts on the growth of e-businesses, especially during this pandemic, do you think this will last even after the pandemic or will it start to decline? Uh, nice. I like this question. Um, yeah, actually, we're facing um, a big growth during the pandemic, uh, fortunately for us. So we're growing four, even five times during this pandemic. 
Um, and I would say, looking at the trends, um, people are getting more convenient. Um, I'm not sure what happened in Philippines, but in Indonesia, um, people are getting more convenient in doing everything online, doing the e-business, even procure everything um, from um, e-system. So I would say this um, fortunate uh, opportunity is very good for logistic business and also for e-commerce. And I would say in the next five years, um, it will still be the same. But of course, after um, the pandemic is ending, maybe the, the growth is a bit steeper. But I won't say it's going back to pre-pandemic. Yeah, so the pandemic is really here to stay, guys. So we better start doing your businesses now and don't wait for the time to start. That's so nice, Ms. Gretia. So another question for you. <laughs> Sorry, there there are lots of questions in store for you just so they can be able to learn from your experience as well. So here we have, good afternoon, Miss Maria. Now that e-commerce is slowly growing and more and more competitors start entering the market, what are some essential things to do if you want to keep your loyal customers? So considering that your business is logistics, right? There are tons of options for logistics in yeah. Indonesia. So how do you handle your competitors when it comes to that? Uh, the good side from Shaper is we are actually an aggregator for logistic solution, right? So we are not actually competing with the um, TPL parties or the cross-border free order things like those. But basically the spirit here is we want to grow together with our partners. So what I love about the marketplace or aggregator business is actually we don't need to compete with others. Whenever the partners grow bigger, we also grow bigger together. That's what I love about this business. I think nowadays it's not about competing, but it's more about the collaboration. So um, the challenge here is actually creating a business to actually supplement and each other uh, in ter- um, instead of just competing and then making a substitution business, I think. Wow, that's nice. So maybe just for my personal question, just for a follow-up, Ms. Gatya, if you are to suggest a business Mm -hmm. that has not so high of a competition and something that students like me can start, just so also I can, you know, start, but because I'm afraid that I may have like lots of competitors, right? So what are your suggestions on on a business that I can start or maybe a side hustle that we can do? Hmm, I see. Well, that's, that's a tough one because I think to create something that is really unique, you have to make sure that you are the only one that can create that. I mean, uh, it's a personal touch from you. Um, so maybe if I want to give an example uh, from my previous business, from my side hustle, uh, previously back then in 2013, 2014, I forgot. Uh, back then we don't have, in Indonesia, we don't have even Food Panda, we don't have Grab, we don't have um, Lalamove back then. So um, people really come to an event to try new food and stuff. Um, before then it's very unique and we grow together with the instagram trend where people come um, to a nice place and an instagramable f- uh, location with instagramable food back then so the unique selling point over there that we offer is actually creating a good ambience where you can travel the world through food so i think that's the unique selling point that um, as a business owner, um, you need to create seeing from the potential um, on the market and also learning from maybe the concern from your end. Maybe now as a as an um, student, you can see around uh, what you actually uh, think it's a good support for you. Then maybe you can create that as a business if it's that's based on your passion and you can really make it happen. 
Wow. So guys, as what Miss Maria said, you can start by following trends or you can also research on what you're passionate about. So And creating example, a trend. Yes. So you also create a trend with your product. Wow, that's so nice. So guys, if you have more questions for Miss Maria, you can just send it in the chat box. But as for the moment, we have more <laughs> for you. Okay, so next one. I think Are I saw you... one good question oh, here. Yeah, Maybe. from Hannah. We can read that. Yeah. Okay, so from Hannah. Do you have any advice on how to balance side hustles with personal and academic responsibilities? Mm-hmm. I think to balance um, side hustle and main job, it's uh, actually it's a bit challenges. But if you do have a side hustle uh, coming from your passion, I think you'll be able to manage your time wisely. The time management here is the key, but to be able to balance it with the personal and academic responsibilities, it's another challenge. I cannot say much in the academic part because I finish all my duty first before doing the side hustle and the work thingy, but to be able to balance personally, I think um, basically having a work-life balance in your 20s I don't think that's um, priority. Basically, in your 20s, I think it's the time to learn more, to fail more, and to chase as many networking, as many possibilities as you can. And after that, maybe you can start balancing it a bit by having more the work-life balancing, or in this case, maybe work, side hustle, and life balance. Wow, okay. So, that's your answer, Hannah. So, maybe if you really love what you want, then it won't be hard for you to do those things. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Katya. Now, for the next question, since you have also um, customers from Shipper, right? And Mm -hmm. most of them are actually your loyal ones. So, how do you connect and maintain a relationship with them and even if all of the interaction is actually done online so do you have any tips on how you communicate with them during this time of the pandemic Mm. yeah i think in the logistic industry most of the networking is actually offline Um, the main people like to connect offline but we have to uh, be more creative here and doing the hybrid communication, combining online and offline. But actually, um, the point here in the maintaining relationship with our client is actually really understand what they need. Um, so we have to be like thoughtful and a bit more empathic maybe by um, coming forward with the data and maybe the, you know, what, what might customer need more uh, beyond our service. So actually, we are supporting them by having a lot of charities, connecting them with a partner to even grow more. So actually, the key here is um, keep maintaining to them and be attentive and maybe offering something that they don't even think they need before. Wow, okay. So it actually boils down to customer service, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have good customer service, whether it is a small business or a big business like that of shipper, you always have to focus also on your customer service. So the customers will go back to you. Nice. So actually, the questions are being sent to me through private message and we have two more if that's okay with you, Miss Maria. So yeah. also, just to elaborate, if you have questions or anything, Uh, any concern related to logistics or if you have more to ask you can also join our telegram group which i will send the link later so for the next one again sent through private message how do you solve the problem of not having enough manpower when it comes to packaging and shipping due to lack of funds for their salary so did it ever happen to shipper Mm, due to the lack of what lack, lack of sorry okay so how do you solve the problem of not having enough manpower mm-hmm. when it comes to packaging and shipping sometimes it can be because of the lack of funds for their salary oh i see hmm i think that uh it's a main 
are a common problem for a small business owner that is getting bigger, right? Um, so I think to overcome that, we need to go back to our business plan. <clears throat> If you're already creating a good margin uh, for our businesses that we can provide um, our team or uh, you know, give the salary to our team uh, wisely, So um, to overcome that, actually, that is something that uh, Shipper offer actually for our client. Um, by having Shipper, we help to create a better and lean supply chain, and we try to solve that problem as well. Wow. Okay. So I think it also goes to budget allocation, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. correct funding and you know proper planning. So wow. Let's hear also. Another question from private message also. So I think this is the last one. I'm sorry, it's so many. But thank you for sharing also your ideas with us. Of course. Oh, here we have this one first from Sir John Carlo. Hi, Miss Gacha. Do you fam- are you familiar in the surety bond? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um it's more like the kind of insurance to help you um borrow some money from the bank if I'm not mistaken, okay? Right? Mm, okay. So not too familiar with this, but what I understand it's like um uh, like the collateral when you are um wanna expand your business, you need a working capital. Okay. So Sir John Carlo, is your question answered? I think the surety bond is a guarantee that involves a promise by one party to assume responsibility for the debt obligation of a borrower. So I think it's more on the borrowing side. Also, it's a contract used in the banking sector. Is that um, yeah. the answer to your question, Sir John Carlo? Okay, maybe we can wait for him to also send a follow-up question after. So, another question sent through private message is, Hello, Miss Maria. What are your thoughts on the people who buy and sell as a form of business? Do you see this as a form of unfair play? Or can it be considered as a legitimate business? Why is it becoming the unfair business? Maybe uh, for her, It can seem like unfair because of uh, it, it's buy and sell. So it's like borrowing another person's idea and then mm-hmm. reselling it. Do you think it's unfair or what are your thoughts on this? I think uh, in my personal opinion, it's, um, it's the way of growth hacking <clears throat> your business. Able to reach to a bigger market, you need a reseller, you need to um, multiply effect um, to grow your business. So I don't see it as um, unfair, as long as it's legitimate uh, from the owner or from the main business owner. Oh, okay. So it's actually about giving credit also, right? Mm-hmm. To yeah. the first one who innovated the product. Okay, so that's nice. Maybe I'll follow up again on my part. Sorry. It's just so nice also to ask questions from one who is very knowledgeable also in the idea of logistics so there are times where in here in the philippines we have quarantine regulations so the logistics are actually sometimes delayed or the estimated delivery dates of the products don't get mm-hmm. delivered what do you do to resolve that especially that it can lead to downtime or product line down what do you tell your customers in order for them to understand those those trying times uh i see i think that uh often happen during this time right because um, a lot of um a lot of street is getting closed people is uh, getting locked down and everything i think uh, as a business owner it's important for us to manage expectation for our customer Um, manage their expectation that it might get delayed sometime. Um, there's things that can happen outside of our control, but also um, getting back to them and make sure they're happy as a um, customer relation 
and communication after sales. It's also important. If um, those things we cannot avoid, then we have to maybe um, apologize and give, giving them incentive um, for the, their next purchase. But from the, the logistic uh, point of view here, uh, we are really a cheaper. We're trying to um, fulfill the SLA of our delivery and make sure um, from every partner, from our logistic partner, that not happen. Mm, okay, so it comes to one idea. So you have to communicate with your customers and mm-hmm. always make sure to have a good customer service. Okay, so thank you, Miss Maria. That would be all for the questions. I, I hope everyone learned a lot from her, especially in Uh, the logistics side of e-commerce. So, again, remember to start your business now, especially if you have the idea and the capability to do so. And once you start, also make sure to have good customer service. Okay, so to formally close this event, we would like to thank Ms. Maria Gashaputri for imparting their valuable insights and inspirations at the Ace Commerce webinar entitled Shipper, the Digital Logistics Solutions for E-Commerce Business. Okay. So again, guys, we would like to invite you to join our website at acecommerce.org so there you can see also the events for the following weeks. And you can also see there the forums in which you can ask different knowledgeable professionals or speakers from the past that can answer your queries regarding the e-commerce and the like. Okay, so here we have the website. So again, this is supported by indubayabay.com, Asia Commerce, and Online Store ID. So again, thank you for joining the Ace Commerce community, and we thank you. So for the e-certificates, I would like everyone to please answer the evaluation form, which I will be sending right now in the chat box. So for uh, the evaluation form, If you answer this, this is where you can get your e-certificate. So again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this webinar. Thank you very much, Ms. Maria. We have learned a lot from you. Okay, so I think let's just have a short picture taking. Everyone, if you can just turn on your cameras. Thank you. There you go. Okay, let's just wait for the others to also turn on their cameras. Hi, guys. There you go. Okay. Let's just wait for the others. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. No problem. Okay. If you could just smile and let's take a picture in three, two, one. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Ms. Maria. Thank you also, Shipper and Sir Daddy, for accepting this invite. Okay, so everyone, before you leave, please answer again the evaluation form. See you in the chat box. Thank you, Ms. Maria, and have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye.